Lady, we are hungry and lost, and hope such a goddess as yourself will help us in our need. You are welcome here. You are very welcome. Come in. The men had eyed my pigs on the way in, elbowing each other and whispering loudly their hope that I might kill one. I set my feasts before them, the meats and cheese, the fruits and fish. I set as well my largest bronze mixing bowls, filled to the brim with wine. They gulped and chewed, seized dripping cuts of mutton and dangled them down their throats. They poured and poured again, soaking their lips, slopping the table with red. Bits of barley and herbs stuck to their lips. The bowl is empty, they would say to me. Fill it. Add more honey this time. The vintage has a bitter tang. Of course. Thank you, sweet. I smiled. I could not stop smiling. The fragility of mortals bred kindness and good grace. They knew how to value friendship and an open hand. If only more of them would come, I thought. I would feed a ship a day, and gladly. Two ships, three. Perhaps I would start to feel like myself again. Mistress, when would your husband be home? We would toast such fine hospitality. Oh, I do not have a husband. Of course. You are too young to be married. Then it is your father we must thank. My father lives far away. Then perhaps there is some other host we should thank. An uncle, a brother. If you would thank your host, thank me. Do not tell me that such a beauty as yourself dwells all alone. Oh yes, quite alone. He would smile. He could not help it. There was never any fear in him. Why should there be? He had already noted for himself there was no man's cloak hanging by the door, no hunter's bow, no shepherd's staff, no sign of brothers or fathers or sons, no vengeance that would follow after. If I were valuable to anyone, I would not be allowed to live alone. I'm sorry to hear it. Come, I have fed you well. Will you tell me your names? Tell us yours first. Thirsty. Is there a sow shrieked in the yard? The man threw me back against the wall. My head hit the uneven stone, and the room sparked. I opened my mouth to cry out the spell, but he jammed his arm against my windpipe, and the sound was choked off. I could not speak. I could not breathe. I fought him, but he was stronger than I had thought he would be, or maybe I was weaker. With his right hand, he tore my clothes. A practice gesture. With his left, he kept his weight against my throat. I had said there was no one on the island, but he had learned not to take chances. Or perhaps he just didn't like screaming. At last, I felt the man tremble, and his arm loosened. My throat was crushed inward like a rotted log. I could not seem to move. A drop of sweat fell from his hair onto my bare chest and began to slide. Is she dead? She better not be dead. Her eyes are open. It's my turn. The captain stepped back and spat at the floor. The drop of sweat slid onwards, carving its slimy furrow. Convulsively, I swallowed. My throat clicked. I felt a space open in me. The sleep spell I had been going to say was gone, dried up. I could not have cast it even if I wanted to, but I did not want to. My eyes lifted to his rutted face. Those herbs had another use. And I knew what it was. I drew breath and spoke my word. His rib cage cracked and began to bulge. I heard the sound of flesh rupturing wetly, the pops of breaking bone. His nose ballooned from his face, and his legs shriveled like a fly sucked by a spider. He fell to all fours. He screamed, and his men screamed with him. It went on for a long time. As it turned out, I did kill pigs that night, after all.